My top is gun control, and my claim is that gun control fails to prevent crime. And I can prove this using uh, three points. First, that gun control does not prevent criminals from acquiring guns. That most gun-related offenders and victims of these gun-related crimes have some sort of criminal record. And gun-controlled states or districts do not have a lower crime rate than uncontrolled states. First, that gun control does not prevent criminals from acquiring guns. There are several ways that um, many criminals can get around the legal way of buying guns. And one of these is through straw purchases, where they get someone who can buy a gun, a uh, family member, friends, or drug dealer, whatever, to get um, buy the guns for them, and then sell it to the, the criminal who cannot buy it himself. Another way is federal firearms licensees. And these are legally licensed to sell guns, but sometimes they can be corrupt or just self-serving and will sell the guns to anyone, <coughs> anyone who wants them instead of the legal way of doing it. Additionally, as of um, the mid-2000s, 23,775 guns have been lost, misplaced, or stolen from these licensees since September of 1994. And in alcohol, tobacco, and firearms agent, Jay Wachtel admits, let's be honest, if someone wants a gun, it's obvious the person will not have difficulty buying a gun, either legally or through the extensive United States black market. My second point is that most gun-related offenders and the victims of these crimes have some sort of criminal record. In Marion County, Indiana, 75% of all homicide suspects and 63% of victims have had an adult or juvenile record of some kind. And in Charlotte, North Carolina, 71% of gunshot victims have been previously arrested, with 64% of them having been convicted out of a sample of 545 gunshot victims. And according to Eugene Bullock, a law professor at UCLA, 81% of all homicide defendants have at least one arrest on their record, and 70% and, I mean, have at least one conviction. My third point of gun controlled states or districts not having lower crime rates than uncontrolled states or districts is that, um, first off, Washington, D.C. put a handgun ban in 1976, and its homicide rate actually grew from that point up to over 80 murders for every 100,000 people in 1991, compared to 26 for every 100,000 people in 1976. Um, yeah, 1976. And the average for U.S. in 1991 was only 10. So um, Washington, D.C. had over eight times as many murders per 100,000 people. On the other side, in Florida, when the right to carry law passed, for, um, it, like you, could, you had the right to conceal a firearm on you as long as you met certain conditions, such as age, and having passed a um, training course. Um, that when that law passed in 1987, the murder rate, the average murder rate dropped 36 percent, and was low, dropped 36 percent lower than before, and um, matched the average U.S. rate at the time. And it was a similar story in Texas when they passed theirs in 1996. The murder rate dropped um, 30 percent than previously, and also matched the U.S.'s rate. Um, so my three points of criminals can still acquire guns. Most gun related offenders and victims have some sort of record, and that gun controlled states um, do not have a lower crime rate than uncontrolled um, help prove that gun control fails to prevent crime. All right, proposition's clear. The secondary claims are laid out pretty clearly. They're signposted really well in the body of the speech. I do think on your second point that you need a clarification of what the inference is that you're making on that point because the fact that you've got these statistical correlations uh, doesn't tell us what the conclusion is that we should be drawing here. Uh, it's just a piece of information. You're the one who should be making the inference, and the inference is largely that uh, these people are criminals regardless of whether or not they have access to guns. 
violence. It's not the access to guns that produces uh, their uh, riskiness to the public. It is the fact that they are inclined to violent or criminal behavior. Um, so I thought that uh, that second point was a, an interesting one, and you've got good information on it, but the inference needs to be explained a little bit more clearly. Uh, you, you've got a couple of hypotheticals that you're presenting early on. Uh, I did like the um, actual examples that you had with D.C. and Florida, although you do want to give us source citations on that because there's some information that's being presented in those cases that I know comes from somewhere, but you're not citing where it came from. Uh, like I said, the statistics on the murder rate in um, Washington, D.C., that, that sound, those sound like good numbers. I, I, I don't doubt that they are accurate, but you ought to be telling us uh, that. You had one authority early on who talked about how people could get around these through the straw man purchases. That's all hypothetical stuff, though, but at least you've got an authority on that particular point. Um, the generalizations, I think, are reasonable given the evidence that you're presenting. Uh, I'm not sure that they're thoroughly convincing, but I think that uh, you're on the right track there. The presentation is generally solid, and I thought you had a good summary at the end of the speech as well. All right.